Stay cool, try, Murray. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Crew Trime. Crew Trime. Crew Trime. Yeah, Crew Trime. I'm running out of these. My name is Sarah and what I do here is tell you a terrible story to ruin your day. And put on my makeup at the same time. So if that sounds like fun to you, you are in the right place. Murray! So make sure you subscribe to this channel, turn on all of the notifications, and then that way you will never miss one of my terrible stories. I feel like today's case was recommended by a viewer, but I can't seem to find that anywhere. So if it was you, Thank you, I appreciate you. This case is actually pretty recent having occurred like in the last just couple of years, like post COVID. And it's a wild one, so hold on to your butts. This is the story of Caitlin Armstrong. On May 11th, 2022 at 9.56 PM in Austin, Texas, police officer Martin Salinas responded to an urgent welfare check at 1708 Maple Avenue. When he entered the home, he found the owner, Caitlin Cash, performing CPR on a young woman. Caitlin's cell phone was on speaker with the 911 dispatcher giving her instructions. So officer Salinas took over CPR until the ambulance would arrive just a few minutes later. Caitlin Cash, who simply went by Cash, told detectives that she had just gotten home a few minutes earlier and found her friend, Mariah Wilson, lying on the bathroom floor. She had injuries to her head and chest and she was covered in blood. After the ambulance arrived, 25-year-old Mariah Wilson was pronounced dead at the scene. So how did we get here? I'm glad you asked. Anna Mariah Wilson, known to those closest to her as just Mo, was born on May 18th, 1996 in Littleton, New Hampshire to Karen and Eric Wilson. And she also had a brother named Matt. Her father, Eric, had actually been on the US ski team and her aunt was a two-time Olympic Nordic ski racer. So raised in a family of skiers, Mo attended Burke Mountain Academy. Burke Mountain is a private school in Vermont that trains alpine skiers. Serious business. Mo graduated in 2014, but unfortunately her skiing career was cut short because she developed some pretty serious knee problems. So after high school, Mo attended Dartmouth and graduated in 2019 with a Bachelor of Engineering degree. So she was a very smart cookie. So Mo was a lifelong athlete, of course, and she'd always really enjoyed bicycling. So she decided to try to use that to rehab her knees. Of course, she was immediately great at it. <laughs> She started to compete in road races and gravel races. I'm ready. Yeah, ready. I'm so excited to be here. Um, it feels like the first big race in a year. So, um, yeah, I'm it ready is. Ready to kick it off. So gravel racing is kind of like a mashup between road and mountain biking. So it happens on dirt roads, dirt tracks, gravel roads, and there's also like stretches of paved roads to kind of, you know, link the off-road parts. You get it. After Mo graduated from Dartmouth, she moved to San Francisco in the fall of 2019 and began competing in gravel races part-time. She was also working as a demand planner for a company called Specialized. Uh, it makes special specialized bicycle parts. She was on their sales team. So Mo was described as incredibly kind, outgoing, and friendly. And at the time that she died, she had only been training for like three years, but she was considered to be one of the best gravel racers in the scene. So while she was competing in a three-day race in Idaho in September of 2021, she met a guy from Austin, Texas, who was also quite a big deal in the gravel racing scene. He had actually won several big races consecutively 2017. 17, 18, and 19, it was 37-year-old Colin Strickland. My name is Colin Strickland. I am a bicycle racer. So Colin was very impressed with Mo's natural talent and abilities, and he spoke with her about connecting her to sponsors so that she could try to do this full-time. In late October, Colin and Mo crossed paths again at another gravel race, this time in Arkansas. Okay, so Colin grew up on a farm in a small town outside of Austin, Texas, and he began riding a bike the same way most of us do, just to get around. Colin loved cycling and he fell in love with competition. And I'm not gonna pretend to know anything <laughs> about cycling, but by all accounts, he was naturally gifted and he started winning races ahead of some of the more notable names in the sport. Who are those names? I don't know. <laughs> he ended up transitioning to gravel racing where he became a superstar and he started racing professionally. In 2019, Colin was living in Austin and he met a girl on a dating app named Caitlin Armstrong. Caitlin Marie Armstrong was born on November 21st, 1987 in Livonia, Michigan, 
Michigan, which is about 20 miles west of Detroit. Her parents, Sean and Michael Armstrong, divorced when she was young, you know, only five years old, and that caused both of her parents to struggle financially, and her mother developed an alcohol problem, so her upbringing wasn't optimal. But Caitlin was very athletic, you know, she played volleyball, basketball, and ran track at Stevenson High School, where she was also voted best hair. I mean, she was a ginger, so. <laughs> After graduation in 2005, she went to Schoolcraft College and then later transferred to Eastern Michigan University where she studied finance. And after college, she became a licensed real estate agent and got into flipping houses and also became a certified yoga instructor. In 2019, she was living in Texas and dating Colin Strickland, having met him through this dating app. When COVID hit, Colin and Caitlin were dating exclusively, but it wasn't until early 2021 that they began actually living together. Caitlin's apartment had flooded, so she needed some place to live urgently. And Colin view, this was just going to be a temporary arrangement. He wasn't really ready to live together. And their relationship was kind of hot and cold. You know, they had a pattern of breaking up and getting back together. It was just volatile. We are so over. <laughs> Fine by me! So now it's early October 2021 and Colin and Caitlin were on a break. And no, this break did not work out any better for them than it did for Ross and Rachel. <laughs> well, during this break, Colin had a brief fling with Mo. We were on a break! Mo was actually in town for a race and he was briefly single, although still living in the same house with Caitlin. But Caitlin wasn't in town during this little fling. She had jetted off to Mexico. Well, Colin and Moe's romantic fling was only like maybe a week or two. She wasn't local. She lived in San Francisco anyway, so it was just sort of opportunity. Anyway, when the dust settled and Caitlin returned from Mexico, she and Colin reconciled. In addition to living together, Caitlin and Colin had a business, Wheelhouse Mobile, which specialized in refurbing old vintage trailers. So Caitlin handled the finances for the business. She was just better at that sort of thing, but she also handled the scheduling, sponsors, and social media accounts for Colin's racing as well. She had access to all of Colin's social media accounts and everything on his iCloud and instant messages. And the business. We call this foreshadowing. So in April of 2022, Colin spent a month in California doing some road training and he was messaging with Mo the whole time he was there. Now remember, Caitlin could see all of this and she was big mad about it. She knew that Colin and Mo had hooked up during this break and she didn't like that he was still talking to her. You know. We were on a break. But Colin did whatever Colin wanted and he wanted to talk to Mo. Well, on May 2nd, Caitlin looked up Mo on her phone. She also started tracking her on Strava, which is like a exercise tracking app. Anybody who runs or cycles, they know what Strava is. Colin's road training ended in Tucson, Arizona, which is where Caitlin met him so that they could ride back together. Before Caitlin arrived, Colin deleted the string of texts between him and Mo. Also, Caitlin had had previously gotten into Colin's phone and blocked Mo's number, which caused a whole dramatic argument before. I mean, in Colin's mind, these were just the innocent, friendly, work-related conversations. But he also didn't want the argument with Caitlin, so he ended up deleting the thread and then he changed Mo's name in his phone to Christine Wall. You know, so he could just continue talking to her right under Caitlin's nose. Well, here's the thing though. Caitlin already had Mo's phone number. So all you have to do is type in the phone number, like you're gonna send a message, and it will pull up if you've messaged that number before, so then she sees Christine Wall is now Mo's phone number, she knew. Now, I'm not saying that any of this is justifiable or reasonable, but Caitlin is squinting at this because it, it looks bad. Why lie if there's nothing to hide? So Colin and Caitlin got back from Tucson on May 9th. The next day, Mo sent a message to Colin to let him know that she was going to be coming to Austin in a couple of days for a race. He replied that they should get together and do like a training ride while she was in town. Mo told Colin that she was going to be staying with a friend for a couple of days before the race and then also shared the address so that he could pick her up later. Once Mo 
got into town, she reached out to Colin, they chose the date to hang out, I guess, and Colin zoomed away on his motorcycle all the way to Cash's house where Mo was staying. By the way, he told Caitlin that he had some errands to run, you know. Not that he was gonna go see Mo. Well, he picked up Mo and they went swimming at Deep Eddie's pool in Austin. And then afterwards they went to a burger place nearby to grab a bite. While they were out, Caitlin had called and texted Colin who, you know, ignored it. After they ate, Colin dropped Mo back off at Cash's house and then left. He didn't go in at all. He just dropped her off and went home around 8.30 PM. So security footage from the burger place near the pool shows a black Jeep Grand Cherokee with a bike rack lurking nearby. Spoiler alert, the Jeep was Caitlin Armstrong's. Several of Cash's neighbors on her block had surveillance cameras, you know, like ring, ring cameras. One of those cameras footage captured Colin's motorcycle arriving for the pickup and the drop off. It also showed Caitlin's Jeep drive by the house twice. Another neighbor's camera showed the Jeep almost come to a stop at Cash's house before continuing to drive on. Third neighbor's camera showed the Jeep circling Cash's house between 8.30 and 9.15 p.m. and that one recorded audio. That audio captured Mo screaming, then two gunshots followed by about five seconds of silence, then a third gunshot. The first two gunshots seem to have been fired inside the kitchen because according to investigators that's where they found uh, spent bullet casings. When police arrived at Cash's house that night, Mo had been shot twice in the face and once in the heart. After Colin left Cash's house that night, he texted Caitlin saying that he was done running his errand. And Caitlin was well aware that that was a lie since she had essentially been stalking them that whole evening. So after receiving that text, Caitlin walked into Cash's house and shot Mo with the handgun that Colin had bought for her a year earlier. Then she drove home and acted like nothing happened. Totally normal. It wasn't until the next morning that police came to the Strickland slash Armstrong house. They told Colin about Mo's death and they asked for him to come in, you know, to answer some questions. He was the last person that was seen with her alive. They actually questioned Colin for about six and a half hours. They were squinting at him pretty hard, but they cleared him, obviously. Due to some of what he said in that interview, they wanted to also speak with Caitlin. They did a quick background check on her, and apparently they found a warrant for her arrest for larceny. Caitlin had skipped out on paying a $650 Botox bill. <laughs> Oops. So based on that, they were able to arrest Caitlin and bring her in for questioning. Just when they were about to really start digging into some juicy conversation, they discovered that the warrant had the wrong birth date on it. Now, because of that error, they had to investigate the warrant, you know, to see if it was even the correct Caitlin Armstrong. And unfortunately, they had to tell her that she was free to go. So she walked right out the door. Oh, I forgot to mention that before they discovered this error, they were confronting Caitlin with this surveillance footage of her Jeep in and around all the areas where Mo was that night. Is there any explanation as far as why the vehicle would be over there? I would like to leave. She wasn't trying to deny anything. On May 12th, Caitlin went to CarMax in Austin and sold her Jeep for $12,000. I mean, it's possible that she just needed the money, but it's more likely that she was trying to keep the Jeep's internal GPS system information away from the police. I mean, eventually they did track down the Jeep and it did confirm that, you know, that was her Jeep driving around that area, all the things that they suspected. It showed that Caitlin did follow Colin and Mo to their dinner at Pool Burger and it showed her circling Cash's house for about 45 minutes, which is exactly what the neighbor's surveillance video showed. The, her phone data did not register any of this stuff, but it just means that it was either powered off or in airplane mode because she did use it just before and after being at Cash's house. She also came home the night of the murder in her Jeep with her cell phone in the car. Okay, now at this point, Caitlin isn't necessarily being viewed as a suspect by police, so they're not watching her, they're not preventing her from moving around, but Caitlin can see what's cooking and she's on the move. The next day, May 13th, Caitlin flew from Austin to New York City and then she visited her sister Christy for a few days. First, she told Christy that you know, she was just gonna head home to Austin after the visit, like fly home, but then maybe she was gonna rent a car and drive. By the time police figured out where Caitlin was, she was already gone and she'd already deleted all of her social media accounts. 
That's weird. Now, of course, they're watching all the airlines and passport data, and they never got a hit on Caitlin's passport. But they did find out that on the morning of the 18th, Caitlin booked a one-way ticket from Newark to San Jose, Costa Rica, using her sister's passport that she had stolen. Now, officially a fugitive, an international search was launched to find Caitlin. So for the next month, investigators chased leads from San Jose to the small island of Santa Teresa. It was harder to make progress in Santa Teresa because a lot of the people there looked just like Caitlin. You know, it was highly populated with American tourists and, you know, yoga types. Some of the locals did recognize the photos of Caitlin and they said that she was using the name Ari and had been looking to teach yoga locally. This gave police an idea to set a trap. They intended to bait Caitlin using the local Facebook group for the island by posting an ad seeking a yoga instructor. After several days and not getting any contacts, they were about to give up on that idea and the four of them were about to head back to San Jose to leave for the States, but then, they got a bite. So they arranged a meeting with this yoga instructor who was answering the ad and who walked in? Caitlin Armstrong. But she looked a little different. It turns out that shortly after arriving in Costa Rica, Caitlin had plastic surgery on her face. What? She got a nose job and a brow lift and a lot of fillers and she had changed her hair, coloring it brown. I mean, this woman is really trying it. You know, she was gonna disappear and become an entirely new person. Well, she was arrested, obviously, and once in custody, they found receipts. <laughs> She had had surgery under the name Allison Page, about like $6,500 worth of surgery. I think she was actually still like wearing the nose bandage. Like this was fresh. So 43 days into this manhunt, Caitlin Armstrong was found arrested and extradited back to the United States. When Caitlin arrived back in Texas, she was charged with first degree murder, unlawful flight to avoid prosecution, and misuse of a passport. No surprise, Caitlin pled not guilty. And you guys, if this story wasn't wild and wacky enough, get this. While awaiting trial, Caitlin tried to escape. Two weeks before her trial was scheduled to start, she was taken out of the Travis County Jail for a medical appointment, and this wild woman made a run for it. She was obviously captured immediately and an escape charge was added. In the trial, the state outlined Caitlin's search history for the time that she was in Costa Rica. She searched for rhinoplasty. She searched, can pineapples burn fingerprints? She searched, can IMEI be tracked if not making phone calls? which that refers to digital footprints in the way to track cell phone data. She also searched for her own name a lot. Well, the defense said that Caitlin did not kill Mo. She didn't avoid prosecution. She just merely left the States because the last time she talked to the police, they told her she was free to go. That makes no fucking sense. <laughs> They also tried to say that she was afraid of Colin and or Colin was the one who committed the murder. I mean, oh, okay, maybe, but then why was she using her sister's passport and an alias? After about two hours of deliberation, the jury reached a verdict. Caitlin Armstrong was found guilty and was sentenced to 90 years in prison with probation available after serving 30 years. She is currently serving her sentence at the Dr. Lane Murray unit in Gatesville, Texas. After Moe's death, her family established the Mariah Wilson Foundation, aimed at promoting healthy living and community building by supporting organizations dedicated to expanding access to recreation, sports, and outdoor adventure for children. The inaugural Ride from Mo gravel ride was held in Vermont in 2023 with pro Seeds benefiting a local nonprofit dedicated to children's outdoor adventures. The second annual ride will take place on May 11th, 2024. And if you are interested to check it out, I will link it all down below. And that is the story of Caitlin Armstrong. If you are interested to know any of the makeup that I used in today's Luke, then just Luke down in the description box because everything is linked. If I used anything that is no longer available, I will find you something similar. Thank you so much for hanging out today and for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you wanna see more videos like this one, then consider subscribing to this channel before you leave today. I upload new videos here on YouTube every week and you can follow me on all of the other socials as well. That is it for now. I will catch you next time in the next video. Bye! I need to wash these makeup brushes. They are comically dirty. <laughs> Monique.
name is not Monique. The a fit. <clears throat> <clears throat> You guys, please don't start. So, come on. Come on. <sighs> These little fuckers are ruining my life.